paper draws on some research that I've been working on for the last, oh gosh, probably three or four years. And it sort of builds on my initial research about community archaeology and its values. Um, and it really aims to discuss, and I suppose take a positive light on archaeology, uh, that the, we, it has benefits, that it's not all a bad thing, it's not all negative. And I sort of want to leave this session on a positive note, I suppose. Um, so we, we leave happier and feeling that we're doing a good job, or that we should be archaeologists because it makes us happy. Um, but I want to think about the potential impact of excavation specifically uh, on the current happiness and well-being agenda and the potential sort of <coughs> impact we can have on the government genders for gross national happiness and well-being. So sort of our political role. And it's going to draw on a variety of case studies which are taken from both the UK and abroad um, of both community excavation projects but also student excavation projects. Um, and some of the students actually in the assortment, former students, helped me do this project, which is quite nice. Um, and hopefully it will provide evidence to support future best practice in archaeology and archaeological field work, specifically sort of looking at the social agendas we could have, looking at the wider benefits and the values of what we do. So there are theories behind why I started this research. And it was based around current political agendas, not just international agendas, but the initial con lib agendas for gross national happiness and trying to raise it. Um, and it was all over the papers. It started about 2008 um, and it still continues. And so subsequently, the New Economics Foundation funded a lot of research into looking into roots of happiness and what could make you happy. And this got me thinking about the elements that were involved in archaeological excavation and the previous research I'd done into values. And it suggested that there were sort of five principles to happiness that you had to connect, you had to connect with people around you. Um, so and you had to be active, so you had to engage in physical activity. You had to take notice and be curious in the world around you and have new experiences. You had to learn and try something new. You also had to give, so you had to volunteer yourself, join a community group. So think about people beyond yourself. And it seemed to me at this point that being on excavation projects, this is what you had to do, especially community excavation projects. All of these things were things we were doing already. Now, this idea didn't just spring from thin air. To be honest, many of the methods were drawn on actually the museum world and museum service that were being done, specifically from UCL actually. And they were heavily involved in a um, actually wonderful study, in a very interesting study on patient and object handling, which the research proved or suggested that by handling historical objects, by being involved in the past, patients felt better and weller. Um, and ultimately were happier for it and got better quicker. So it drew on some of the methods that they started to implement and in place them on archaeology and community excavations. And specifically, it used the PANAS method, which is positive and negative effect scale, and the VAS scale, but it was modified, which is why it's MVAS. So this modified visual analog scale. And all of these, the PANAS and VAS, I'll talk about a bit more in a minute, were implemented on all the projects. So they were surveys. So the criteria for case studies to be selected to be on this study were that each case study had to have participation. It had to enable people to become actively involved in the process of excavation. It had to have research and training elements so that people could develop new skills and learn new techniques. I needed a diverse range of projects, so student, training, community, mixed method, residential and non-residential. I also wanted a range of contexts, uh, so projects from the UK and non-UK excavations, but also a range of time periods, so the prehistoric Roman, Anglo-Saxon and medieval. I know I'm sort of missing the more modern, but unfortunately I had to limit my study somehow. And longevity, it needed to be at least three or four weeks. 
Otherwise, there wasn't enough scope to measure in over a longitudinal study. And it's a very small longitudinal study, but I needed to do a, a quantity, a study, a survey every single week. So I needed to produce three data sets. So basically, six excavation projects were chosen. And for the sake of anonymity, I'm not going to name what they are because it may not look good for some of the say, student training projects. You'll discover that later. Um, they were all entirely happy, I promise you. Um, and everybody involved in the excavation over the three weeks was asked to complete both the PANAS and the modified VAS survey. So a survey each week, they all had to sit down at a dedicated time and fill in these fantastic forms. They were really, really happy to do that. But it was, I didn't force them to do it. They had to sort of agree to participate. Of course they did, ethically, I had to enable them to choose not to. Um, I'm not a complete, complete tyrant. Um, in total, 210 people were surveyed. But I have to add that with a caveat. Of that, only 92 individuals actually filled one in every single week. Um, so I was left with a, a very small sample of 92 <coughs> individuals, which was still enough um, to complete the final survey. Um, initial study did draw more. So I had 38 community members and 52 student members. All right, the positive and negative effect scale. So, this drew on a model developed by Watson, Clack and Telgum in 1988, actually. So not mine, hands held, I didn't make this up, I'm not that clever. But it's a psychologically accredited measure for measuring positive and negative moods. So, as you can see, different words were associated with positive and different words were associated with negative. And the participant had to choose and assign a number from one to five for each word. And from that, those were analysed to ascertain happiness and well-being. So say, for instance, there were very high scores for all the positive words and very low scores for all the negative words, I would assume that you were desperately happy. Uh, other way around, if you gave me very high scores for your negative words, I'd probably worry slightly about you. Um, Luckily, I would like to point out all these surveys were done anonymously and they didn't know who was filling them in. Thus, I couldn't offer them counselling afterwards. Um, the modified visual analogue scale was the second method I chose. Um, simply putting it, especially when you're doing, I suppose, more scientific, scientific quantitative data sets and you're producing statistical data, you need more than one measure. Just to balance things out a little bit. But this modified visual analogue scale basically worked on a sliding scale. That for each of the five four questions, they had to choose a number from one to ten of how they felt. So a high number would suggest that you were desperately happy and positive, and a low number would suggest you were not. And these questions were developed from those initial suggestions from the New Economics Foundation, based around what makes people happy. So I wanted to know about interest in the world around people, that was the first question. The second one was about how connected people felt. And the third one was about your personal happiness. And the fourth one was about the satisfaction. So basically I was judging happiness at this point on four criteria. The results, the interesting bit. So in terms of the results of both the PANAS and BAS survey, I'm unfortunately going to do what many other people have done during this, uh, this, this session, which is show you lots of graphs in a minute. So I'm very, very sorry. Um, I would like to caveat this with my statistical abilities are limited and learning stats took its toll on me. So bear with me, and I'm sorry. I'm a qualitative fluffy person usually. Um, so I, was look I did statistical analysis on all this data. With some, with some help from a wonderful lady eventually, when I started to get confused because people came back and asked me lots of complicated questions, um, called Diana Phillips. 
Um, and I was looking for overarching data patterns and the comparison between student and community excavations. And looking at, I suppose specifically, if community or student excavations made them happier. Which ones made people happier? And it involved comparing percentage changes from week one to week three. And percentage change in the mean scores of both PANAS and VAS surveys. And then standard deviation was done to establish significance of these results. Um, basically, if you start to have lower variability in your results, it seemed to illustrate patterns of behaviour. And also then, um, I had to do a Wilcoxon paired sample test. This was the one that hurt my head a lot. And basically, this looks to evaluate two, two data sets, the score one and score three, and looks for this, this thing known as p-value. And basically, this is where my data set numbers decreased a lot, because if one score was missing, I had to basically cancel all those surveys out, which is why I got to 92. So basically, my number reduced from actually the mean numbers of 170, I don't know if it's numbers, to 92. Anyway, the Wilcoxon looks for significance, and basically looks for significance and difference between week one and week three tests. Um, and improvements. Anyway, moving on to data analysis. The modified visual analog scale. So I'm going to do the overall results first rather than starting off and dividing. So basically, if we look at this, it suggests I want to show you first the mean scores. It suggested that connectedness for all participants increased the most. But there was also an increase in interest and in satisfaction. And actually, overall, there was an interest increase in all the factors. And this would suggest, if I was being quite blunt about it, that all of them improved from week, two, week one to week three. That well-being and happiness improved from the overall vast survey. And it also, the standard deviation suggested that the mean was actually less variable so there was less variability in these scores in the last week, which suggests actually that it, these some of these results were significant, especially interest. Um, it's a very narrow spectrum, so I have to be cautious of these results. Um, but they were significant, it suggests. I suppose that's the most important point to make. Looking at the difference between the participants on this survey, it did actually highlight some fundamental difference in participant results. The community mean results indicated that interest, connectivity and happiness and satisfaction increased, and in, in basically indicated that satisfaction and connectivity increased the most. Students, on the other hand, connectivity, happiness both increased, but satisfaction actually decreased slightly worrying, suggesting so students are actually less satisfied at the end of the project. I think grading may have something to do with that. Um, the Will Coxon tests actually, so that paired test that I suggested, um, suggests that there is actually significant changes in connectedness um, for, both, for both groups. Um, and the community group also had significant changes in happiness and satisfaction. So that those two were actually fundamentally very significant rises. Another table, lucky you. Um, percentage in mean scores and the average scores of participants. Um, basically, this table suggests the community projects saw higher rises in mean average scores for positive vast survey study attributes than student projects. It suggests that participants in community projects had higher rises in all of the interest, the connectivity, the happiness and satisfaction than students. Um, the largest percentage rises were connectivity and satisfaction. The largest percentage increases for students were connectivity and happiness. But it's again worth noting that there was a decrease in satisfaction for our lovely students in that final week. Moving on to PANAS, positive effects. Um, 
Yes, a highly big table. Um, and Panas affects these of the overall, this is an overall table of all the results melded together. It showed there are increases in feelings of being proud and proud of yourself and strength. And actually these were the lowest ratings initially. So at the end of the project, people felt stronger and they felt prouder. There were little rises and actually very insignificant in attention, alertness, inspiration and determination. And standard deviation suggested that actually, in terms of things that were significant, in terms of things that varied less at the end of the project, strength, pride and inspiration were all significant. They had less variability. But it's also worth noting, this isn't all positive. Some of the positive effects, so happy things, decreased. So we got lower scores for interest, excitement, enthusiasm, activity. So basically people suggesting people felt less interested, less excited, less enthusiastic and less active by the end of a project. I suggest just being lazy. Um, the Wilcox and test increases suggest that increase in strength and decrease in enthusiasm was statistically significant. Yes, there are many tests. Dealing with scientists and statisticians is really difficult. In terms of the negative effects, and this does get quite interesting actually, um, these are overall again for both the community and student groups. During the course of the project in week three, by week three, irritability had increased the most. <laughs> I wonder why. But nervousness has decreased the most. People felt, you know, less nervous, great. But there was rises and small ones in being jittery, feeling upset, distressed and hostile to each other. I only saw a couple of outright fights. Um, there were also small decreases in feeling guilty, scared and afraid. And standard deviation suggested that jittery, upset, guilty and irritable were significant. So basically, bad change is happening. And the mean results overall, the, actually the negative results were, the, the scores were incredibly low, the differences were incredibly small in comparison to the positives, which is good. And actually the Wilcoxon test did suggest and indicate that and suggested that all were actually statistically insignificant apart from nervousness um, and guilt, which seemed to both decrease. I don't know what they were feeling guilty about beforehand, but they had some guilt that disappeared digging. Yay. Looking at the difference between community and student projects, um, overall, the community had increases in by the end of the project in alertness, strength, proud, feeling proud and feeling determined. But again, enthusiasm and excitement decreased. Um, of these, only strength, so feeling strong, was statistically significant. Students felt proud, strong and inspired and determined a lot more at the end of the project. Uh, but interest, excitement and activity decreased the most. Of these, only the proud, the feeling of pride in what they're doing increased, significantly increased. Uh, and there was, but there was a statistically negative change in interest, excitement, and enthusiasm. I'll stop showing you lots of stats in a minute. I've got one more table to show you. I hope. I think. Negative effects and differences between community and students. The community groups. Um, this is actually quite positive. Irritability and hostility decrease the most. Yet. Nervousness increased the most. And actually, so at the end of the project, the, the community groups in some places were ner more nervous than they were to start with. Whilst with students, the nervousness and the jitteriness and the being afraid decreased the most during the course of the project. But as previously ascertained, irrit irritability, hostility, and stress and upset increased the most. And I think these negative effects really start to highlight the disparity between the groups. The participants involved in the community projects experienced 
significant changes in irritability um, and a reduction in that irritability. Yet those in, in, involved in students' projects actually experience increased irritability and hostility and distress. And so with students' projects, we actually start to see more negative effects coming in by the end of the project. I have stopped showing graphs now, it's fine, thank goodness. And I can talk actually about the findings and what this means. Um, so as I suggested, this study actually, the Wilcoxon test looked at 92 individuals by the end of it, so that's statistical significance, but the overall study of the means was actually 170 individuals that were investigated, or could be investigated. And it did show significant change in well-being over a three-week three period. So both the modified VAS survey and the PANAS survey indicate that individuals participating in community projects experience the greatest increase in well-being and happiness. Um, they also suggest that, and this is not just from doing the surveys, but actually also from being on site, that environmental and social issues influence this. So for instance, the weather, the discoveries they were making, and the social tensions on site. Inevitably, they do. So projects where they were making less discoveries actually were less happy. Projects where there were tensions between group members and cliques forming were less happy. No kidding. Um, PANAS did, re did produce more varied results. Uh, the changes were smaller and less significant on the whole. And in a sense, it produces quite a complex picture. Um, and actually, I think in many senses, students and individuals studied more, to, uh, struggled more to fill in this test. Uh, the, mo the modified VAS scale was easier to fill in, it was more visual. But actually, when it's incorporated in the PANAS, it actually starts to give some interesting data, which is why I was very relieved I did both. Uh, projects that incorporated volunteer elements were more likely to have a positive impact on participant well-being and produce greater personal happiness. Um, and this could be due to the different motivations between the groups. For instance, many of the student projects didn't have a choice to go on. They were graded, it was mandatory. That ultimately affected how they felt about the project. In terms of key findings, ultimately what we suggest, or what this project suggested in the research, was that physical involvement, being involved in a physical activity, participating in, in the archaeological excavation, made people feel stronger and more active. And that resulted, or that indicated, an increase in personal well-being. Projects incorporated elements in which people felt they were able to connect not only with other people but with the project resulted in greater satisfaction. Um, and personal happiness was very much, especially in students' projects, linked to this. Um, and I mentioned before having discoveries and making such as finds also helped. But as I also mentioned, the social dynamics impacted on what happened. So what Ultimately, we suggest is that the type of project, fundamentally, well, this is fairly obvious, um, affects whether people experience well-being and happiness and can develop it. So, for instance, student training and community have different results. Non-marked, optional, volunteer excavations resulted in increased well-being and personal happiness for participants as opposed to marked and forced excavations. Sounds a bit like putting them to work, doesn't it? Residential and non-residential, well, actually, being on a residential dig showed a decrease in well-being. Non-residential courses, where they get to go home at the evening and have a nice warm bath and a cosy bed, people were happier. I'm not really surprised with some of the weather on some of the projects. Hey, I'm so sorry. Can you wrap it up? Yeah, moment? it's literally done. It's okay. fine. All done. Um, so, best practice. Final points. What we're suggesting is actually this can have an impact on the community and this can have an impact on our practice as archaeologists and a wider impact politically that we can support our work to governments, to funding bodies. 
we're suggesting that projects, if you want to make people happier, need to be community-centred. They need to look at the context they're working in, and not only the archaeological context, but the social context. They need to have a diverse demographic, clear aims and objectives, freedom and choice, and they need to provide the participants with ownership. And there we go, it's all done. <laughs>